I heard we got some leaks uh, out there in the interwebs, RNG Gator. Oh. You, you want to shed any yeah. light on that stuff? Yeah, one of the discords I'm in, one of the D2 leak discords I'm in, I was looking through it this afternoon and saw uh, some marathon leaks about uh, more information about uh, what the game's about, what it's going to be like. Uh, they've come out this leak, you know, if all this is true or not. I got some stuff from Paul Tassie, from stuff, some guy from a guy named Zaid Ali. He said the gameplay of this game is going to be similar to Tarkov, mm -hmm. but more bungee-fied. Good. It's it isn't going to be hero focused, but rather class focused. Um, there's two there's still a chance for customization, maybe. There yeah, there's be. two maps currently in playable state. One's on a planet in an abandoned colony. One's in, on the marathon ship. We don't know how many maps will be at launch. That's just what they've seen well, so far. Well, let's keep in mind extraction shooter maps are enormous, right? Two maps is kind of it big. Okay. Cool. Oh yeah. There's a uh, feedback. There's the feedback so, here recently has been more positive. Cool. Uh, they've got a trailer in production, I guess, to come out. Marathon is also the new player experience is being emphasized to avoid the Destiny new player controversy. Good, uh, <laughs> good start. So, yeah, anything just make it better than the new player experience in Destiny. It's not going to be that hard. There isn't a I new mean, player experience in Destiny. You know, there isn't. Yeah, there, correct. There, there isn't. There yeah. isn't. There isn't. Not one thing developers are still a bit worried and morale are still is low, you know, because I guess with all the Bungie Sony's, you know, relationship right now. And it's not going to the it probably won't be free to play. They're looking at like a $40 price point like uh, Helldivers. What other game Ooh. is for 40 bucks at night? That's, uh, that's what I'm just. Yeah, I was about to say the whole uh, yeah, Concord buddy. thing. That's tough. But that was a hero shooter. Well, and that was five years behind its time. Yeah, Overwatch yeah, is, at Overwatch the same is time, overplayed. But the loot, Sorry. you know, the Tarkov is the same boat, man. That whole game series has been yes. rock and rolling for about the same amount of time. But why? Like, why? Why do you think tough. that is? Do you think it's because, I mean, multiplayer, they're making their own content, right? I mean, it, every game is different. I, just, I think it's just the following for Tarkov. There's just people okay. that are hardcore about it. Tarkov hardcore. to me doesn't. It's I'm too not hardcore. a big fan of Tarkov. I'm not it's just, Yeah. But I'm again, not there is a game. massive player base for such a yeah. game. That's why, you know, there's a, I can't off the top of my head remember another one which says a lot of things, but, you know, like I have friends that like, uh, I have friends I used to stream a bunch of different games with back in the day and they got into Tarkov and probably over the last three years, that is the only thing they play every night. And you try to get to somewhere mm -hmm. else, they're like, I, it's like you, Gator, with Destiny. They're yeah. just like, I'm comfortable here. It scratches an inch. Like I can just go and do this thing. And if they're just, they're in that, like, that's what it's there for. But you know, if they can pull off having uh, like I'm seeing here, I think I found your, your article you're going through, but like the heroes air quotes translates to four presets that could be customized within those presets. Think of like, I mean, just the customization in destiny, right? Where you have Titan, you choose your class Hunter. of the three and then you have, there's character customization, air quotes, but sure. it's like a bunch of presets you go through. So I'd be, I'd be there's still be kind of like Destiny, it looks like that. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd be Where curious to customize that, your person. I, sorry, we'll let Gator uh, finish this topic. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, sorry that sorry, was sorry, my sorry, bad because I'm the one interjecting. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. Uh, the reason they're looking at the, the $40 thing has been thrown around is because it was originally free to play, but they said after the finals, Remember that game that flopped? Yes. You know, they moved away from free to play and looked at like Hell Divers being forty dollars. But in my opinion, you can't look at Hell Divers and compare Marathon to Hell Divers. It's two no. totally different games. Hell Divers is not an extraction shooter. Yeah. It's a land kill shit, complete uh objectives, and I hope you get out extraction shooter, you know, because you might all die and not finish the thing. But um uh, and they said also microtransaction like cosmetics battle pass is going to be in the game. There might be a video to clear up some of the misconceptions going around regarding it, but the actual significant reveals won't happen until spring of 2025. It's a hero system with more customization. They have unique abilities, double jump, fast revive, invisibility to name a few. It sounds like they're just going to go kind of like what Bo was saying. You're going to have custom ability, but it's going to be like preset is what I'm feeling, you know. However, the gear and guns you find are are the most important part, and they can be customized a ton, it says. 
So that might scratch your itch, Gator, if you can customize your gun. At I, I'm definitely going to play. I'm definitely going to play because I'm a PvP guy. And see, here it's like, this reminds me of Destiny. There's skill trees for the heroes. You get XP and implants, in quotes, mm. for more customization. The original concept of the game had an emphasis on mysteries and world's first races, like Destiny, but now the plan is to have smaller puzzles and secrets. Hmm. Uh, so, art direction aesthetics in the first trailer are intact now and, are, and now are leaned into more heavily for what we saw in the first trailer. Here's my big thing. Sony wants Bungie to hit the 2025 release for this game because of the Sony, like I was saying earlier, the morale. The Sony-Bungie relations aren't in a great place right now. No. If they miss releasing this game when Sony wants to, it's probably not going to help Bungie in the long run. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I hear you. With Sony, I can see more uh, layoffs or whatever coming, you know. Like saying, "Hey, you didn't hit this. We're gonna do. We're gonna step in. Sony's gonna step in more and extend their extend their arm a little more. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna I'm gonna say something very controversial here, and I'm probably gonna get hate for it, but I'm gonna say it anyway because I've been thinking it. What if these layoffs that Bungie's done, this two tiered layoff system? What if this was just needed? What if they just overhired? Bungie probably I over. That. I mean, they overhired and. Did you did you hear about the article that the uh, the attorney who brokered the deal with Sony he he actually talked mm -hmm. shared some stuff he said that in a nutshell that there were a lot of um, upper management that had egos and that they thought <laughs> they they thought somehow because Sony gave them these billions of dollars but they would still be their own company and mm -hmm. the the attorney even mentioned I I'm sorry I don't have a source. Um, oh, you're good. Uh, he, uh, he said, really, you, you guys are signing your company over to, to Sony. Yeah. How on earth yeah. are yeah. you? Oh yeah. You think Sony's just going to stand by and just let you do what you want? It's, they invested, they, uh, they bought the company. It's, it's like I well, said, when I said before, when COVID hit and they started doing all those remote jobs in my, you know, my state was one of them, all them states yeah. where if you worked in these states, yeah. you could work. I'm like, they are overextending. Eventually when people start to go back into work or go back into the office, that's, it's going to shrink. Those jobs and yeah. stuff are going to get let go. The guy I work with at my new job. He has a friend that worked for Bungie. He was in that last, he said he got laid off like a month. I said, he said about a month ago or so. I said, yep, that was that last layoff. He was in that group that got laid yeah. off. So, well, you know, and like you were saying there, uh, Todd, you know, like as much as people love Bungie, right? You can't be a company that has been owned by that many different people and gotten out and then have to get bought by someone else if you make good business decisions, right? Yeah. Mm hmm. Bungie itself, as much as we love the games they make, at the core of it, they are not good at financial decisions and running a business history. as a business. They have history. They're great it. at making games. Yes. But yeah, they don't make good decisions for themselves as a business. And that's been the main problem the whole cycle. I mean, if you look at the history of Bungie with Halo and all the games they made in the past, even Marathon way back when, Bungie were a bunch of hippies. I mean, I'm not saying that in a derogatory form. They were a bunch of freelance, uh, free running. We're gonna build. We're gonna build what we want to build. We don't. We don't give a crap yeah. what anybody else thinks. We're gonna make our game. And I think they carried that for a long time. They had that attitude. They had that swagger. But now, the the the, the roosters come home. To, what is it? The chickens have come home to roost, or whatever that saying is. Whatever. It is. I mean, all you you spent you put all this. I mean, I run a business. I can understand the financials and human capital is the most expensive, but I don't agree with some of the people they laid off because I mean, Salvatore, I mean, come on, man. All I can figure is he might've gotten a bonus way back then when destiny was really hot and maybe he got out with a golden parachute. I'm not saying he did, but I, I run my own business. I know all the expenses that they're going through as a studio, even though I don't run a studio, I run a business and business is business, man. And yeah. the fact that they, I, I saw these layoffs coming, by the way, I knew the other shoe was, I knew the other shoe was going to fall. I knew it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. But what I'm thinking is now that they're down to a lean 850, and I mean, I can't believe I'm saying that a lean 850, that is a big studio, man. 
I still think they can do all kinds of things. Granted, they're not going to be able to have their knitting classes and they're not going to be able to have their own personal yoga massage and or whatever. I don't know what I'm saying, but you know what I'm saying? It's going to be, it, Sony Let's, stepped they, in. Yeah. It's going to be run like a studio now. And that's they, what that, they have to do that. And that, yeah. and that's what, uh, and that's what the, the attorney, the prior attorney for, for bu- the bungee company has said, he goes, it's, it's, it's just good news guys, because Bungie is actually going to be running like a real studio. Now there's not going to be any egos at the top. I mean, a lot of these people left at the top that got laid off or quit or whatever too. So I'm in a wait and see mode with Bungie right now. I want to sit back. I want to see what kind of product they deliver. And then more than that, I want to see what 2025 looks like with marathon and going back to your, your leak about what marathon is. I heard, I heard RNG Gator that marathon was going to be like avatar that you were going to be basically uh, operating a character from with your mind. You're like an operator and you have these characters that, that run in real life that, you know, in the game life I'm saying, and when they die, you just get a new one. I, I don't know. That's, I heard that in a prior leak as well, uh, that it was going to be like, you were like a, uh, I mean, it was something like Avatar where, you know, they would, they would, oh, lay, so like, they would lay in like a it, tube yeah, as yeah, a yeah, human. Yeah. And then you would yeah. run your avatar in the avatar world, but you would be yeah, controlling so like, the mind of an avatar in the, you know what I'm saying? The consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. Why does it make sense? Why you're responding? Yeah. And, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, yeah, that yeah. kind of intrigued me a little bit. So we'll have to see if that's true. You'll see. I like to say that if it's a $40 price point, I don't know if I'm jumping on it. Right. I, I, well, I, I, I'm going to want to see what it, it's said and what people are thinking about it before I'm going to run out and buy it. It's just, yeah, not, it's tough. Yeah. Cause if they were going off of what happened to the finals and then trying to jump onto what happened to hell divers, but at the same time after they made that decision, Concord happened, like it's okay. tough to see. But again, like if they stick with their guns, like when they're first showing stuff for marathon, I mean, people were psyched for that bungee spin on what this kind of game can be. And if they don't do the, we just need to fit into whatever's fitting in, you know, like the, the corporate, like this hat, we have to hit these checkpoints to be a good game. Like if they can keep their bungee spin on it and stick with kind of what the original concept was for what this looter shooter was going to be, I think it can be, I think they can go for a $40 point and yeah, be successful. Gonna... But again, it has to stand out. Who, mm-hmm. Someone in chat was saying with the PVP Hammer. game, like, was it Hammer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me yeah. find it. Let me find it because they put. Has to be really special to get new players. Exactly, yeah. especially as a PVP yeah. game. But now they're going to build Marathon with new players in mind. They're going to be integrating new players into the game. Destiny's run for so long now; they've lost their way as far as making the game being able to be played by new players. I had buddies that played with me years and years ago when they dropped out because the one number one reason they dropped out. I'm so far behind now. I can't catch up. You guys are so they far ahead of me. Going on. Yeah. Well, it's also yeah. just, I, I tried to get my wife into destiny. Yeah, I did too. Uh, not too long mm-hmm. ago. Uh, Cause she's watched me play a ton. She's always interested. You know, she wanted to get into the games I was playing and she was so fucking <laughs> bored with the new, the new player experience that she was like, I just, I, I don't know what's going on. And I'm, I'm someone who has played a shit ton of destiny and I went into it with her. I had no idea what was going on. Yeah, it's confusing. Right? There's no, it's, there's no guideline. No. Yeah. yeah, it was awful. Absolutely yeah. awful. I, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you're gonna have to make you know bringing new players is one thing. You're go- this game's gonna have to bring something that these other extraction shooters doesn't bring. Yeah. To pull people in and go, hey, what's this game? I mentioned for you to come on Twitch and see everybody play a marathon. It's gonna have to be something different. Yeah, got to have something. Like, Bungie's got to bring that creative, like they did with Destiny. It's something nobody had done, you know. Nobody had seen it, and everybody loved it. Yeah. If they don't hit that magic or come close to it, the game's going to flop. Yeah. Well, you have like the new player experience. Obviously, sucks right now, right in Destiny. Mm-hmm. But we have to remember also that the Red War was a thing that existed, and as much as people shit on that for some reason, I loved it because they ran it a hundred times. Yeah. Like the first time you ran through that was incredible and that's that's what my wife was hoping for as a a new player you know so like we know they have the ability 
to because everyone started sometime in Destiny and got hooked to get where you're at. Now, if you're listening to this show, you were hooked at some point by the story in Destiny, right? Yeah. So we know they have the ability with storytelling, whatever, to get you hooked into their game, right? So if they can somehow find that magic again, they're set. But what they have now, I just I don't know. Yeah, I, don't know. I mean, go ahead, Gator. Go ahead, man. It's just like what Thirty and Gaming just said in the chat about the mobile game. Bungie's not even working on the mobile game. It is mostly built by NetEase with yes. only a small amount of Bungie employees on it. That's true. I heard that. But you're calling this a Bungie mobile game. It's like, but they're not in. They're not helping it. What you know? I, I don't know. Yeah. Well, and, you know, 30 N just brought up another point in chat, which came up with your your point earlier, uh, Todd, your first thing. Mm -hmm. You know, when Destiny first came out, there was no live service game. You played it and like it when you were level 18 period. at the end of the story, the stranger disappears. and You're like, OK, what do I do now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And now it's a market oh. and everyone's making, you know, and we've seen like Fortnite got big. So everyone made a battle royale and a few of them have stayed around yeah. and a lot of them disappeared over time um the looter shooter thing got huge a lot of people have launched those there's a couple that have sticked and to prove the point i can only remember the name of one of them and a lot of them have slowly faded away you know the hero shooter like that's another big thing that for some reason didn't click when overwatch launched even though everyone was playing it that's yeah. a really interesting thing where that took years for people to go oh we'll make that game now you know yeah. and you know, Mar the Marvel one looks really interesting. It's had a really good um, introduction to the gaming community. People seem to really like that. And then, of course, you have stuff like Concord that just millions suck. of dollars and years and years yeah. of work that just, just four that. days later is gone, you yeah. know, because you just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I yeah. Mean, I kept watching people playing Concord on Twitch that they, they had like sponsored streams. And I'm watching the game and I'm going, no. This game is not good. This is yeah. not, and the, and you see the streamer going, "I'm loving this. I'm, I'm, like, I get you're being sponsored, so you're trying." And, you know, I, they're getting five to grand to play the it game. For a couple hours. Yeah. yeah, you're getting pushed the game, but I'm going. There's no way as a stream, I'd be like, "This sucks." Uh, y'all no. like me? Y'all have to pay me, but you know, this I, I, sucks. I was not yeah. impressed when I saw it. I was like, no. one, it takes way too many bullets to kill these guys." It's it's like the opposite of the, of uh, of Call of Duty. It's like you gotta you can shoot someone with thirty or uh, three fourths of your clip, and they can just run around the corner and regenerate. It's like man, that that's tedious. I mean that that's like too far off on the other end of the PvP spectrum. But I I will say this: 2016, 2017, 2016, Rise of Iron was winding down, and Bungie went silent. Mm-hmm. We started creating our own content. We were so bored. I mean, I was, I was, mm -hmm. dude, I'm a destiny shill. I love the game. I'll still always love the game. And I would, what I would do to keep busy, I would create new accounts and just rank them up. Just like, just like battlefield. I just go through all the guns, unlock all the guns and then use whatever I wanted, you know, use whatever tank. I had all, everything unlocked on the tank. I'd use whatever I want. But there was this little game that carried destiny all the way until destiny two. It was called trials of Osiris. People would tune in, including myself, every weekend on Twitch or YouTube to watch their favorite streamers try to go flawless. And if Marathon can create that energy and create that excitement in a PvP game, I think they got a shot. Yeah. And, and as that's far as what I'm saying, that's what they've got to do. Is something and like and it's, as far as the $40 price tag, I don't mind paying that as long as the monetization isn't extreme. I mean, I know they're going to have some cosmetic stuff. If, if, as long as it's not pay to play to win, I, oh, yeah. I can't do any games that are pay to win. It just loses all credibility as far as the, the PVP factor there. Yeah. But if, if they give you a lot of game or they give you a lot of uh, entertainment that is replayable, which this is the problem that Bungie has right now. I mentioned it last week's episode. Bungie has a problem with replayable content. They have been making this final shape was a fantastic campaign, but once you oh, played incredible. it, once you played it, you're done with it. I mean, yes, you went into the pale heart 
and you collected your your fragments and you you went to the different worlds and they did an awesome job with that i love the fact that they make it a solo instance so people can't freaking grief you when you're trying to collect chest or whatever and or people run around and kill the yellow bar before you can get to it to get a shot in to get credit for it you know those days those kind of oh, things yeah. people are going through this right now at skywatch trying to get um the ingrams to drop my it, son it, the other night was trying to get he needed one ingram to uh, complete the triumph yeah and i'm listening to him going oh he had he's like i've been at this for 40 minutes trying to get one ingram to drop i'm like I'd be like, screw that. I'm going to play something else. I would have to take a break because I would be ready to break something. You know, yeah. that just that's just stupid. But and the, back to what you were saying with Rise right. of Iron in 2016, mm -hmm. like 30 in game, like 30 and 30 said, and what FUD was saying, that was the only live service game at that time. They had that the market. True. Nobody yeah. else was competing with them. There are more out there now. It's saturated. Right. They have that's, to compete. And, and yeah, they have to compete. And the wear of the game is showing, you know. And another thing to add to that, which I'm correcting myself here, there's a lot more other PvP games to play now than there was back then. Oh yeah, there's exactly. a lot of That's there's a I'm lot saying. of games got, to play out there. They got really used to not having competition, and that really hurt them. Maybe so. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, um, that's the, you know, if, if they can keep their touch on it, you know, it can happen at the same time, like as much as people want to say it was Activision's fault or Microsoft's fault or whatever, it wasn't like, completely them. Yeah. The majority of the really egregious monetization in destiny was a bungee decision. And that's something a lot of people don't want to admit. We thought it was Activision. So that has me. Yeah. But it wasn't, if you really look into the timeline, yeah. When really hor like really bad monetization happened, it was when Bungie was by itself, you know? So like that makes me worried with a forty dollar price tag, like what that's gonna look like, you know, if you're buying skins or whatever, you know, monetization happens. But again, if they can just stick with what that original plan was and put what we know they can do to make something interesting and new in that sphere, like I think it can work. They just really have to learn from their own mistakes and other gaming mistakes. And they uh, hid behind Activision and stuff and like, oh, look, look at that. Don't oh, yeah, look yeah. at this hand. It wasn't us. Look over it's here. totally them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we didn't make that decision. Yeah. It was Activision. I remember yeah, when they yeah. broke off yeah. from, from, from yeah. Activision, everyone rallied behind, behind Bungie that they had become a uh -huh. company for well, a They played They're it perfectly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, I was there. I bet. You know, whatever. Yeah, I was there. Yeah, is everyone the past. They still produced yeah. a great game. That's all. It, I mean, honestly, that's all I, all I care about. Make a good game. As uh, as as thirty would say, make a game, sell a game, play the game. Yeah, I'm probably misquoting him, but make a good game. And who cares about the background? What's or the drama? It's all in the background. One thing I did want to mention too. Hammer said in the in the uh, in the chat here, streamers playing trials isn't going to keep normal players, normal people playing right. the game. Well, here's the thing, no. Hammer. Marathon is not for PVE players. It's for PVP players. It's for Crucible even, mains and people who play other Crucible games like Tarkov. But Trials itself doesn't even pull the same numbers it used to. Like oh. that just it's not it's not the thing anymore because again there's so many Yeah. It's other fun to watch. air quotes better PVP experiences out there anymore, you know, like Yeah. And it's, it's so it, it's is so tough because that's not going to hold people. Exactly. It's not going to hold people. It's not the same crowd. Um, there's other things to witness and watch and be a part of. Right. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's tough. Like that's things they could bank on holding on. And then obviously, you know, getting rid of trials a hundred times during destiny two's life cycle and bringing it back doesn't help the situation at all. True. But, but if you remember yeah, when, but, De remember when destiny two and I'm, I'm really, I'm, I can't believe I'm saying this, but it's starting to make sense now. When Destiny 2 came out and there were fixed roles on everything, remember how mm -hmm. the community revolted and how it was more of a team-based shooter? I you know who it. was behind that? Activision. Noseworthy. Oh, sorry. And Smith. <laughs> They're gone I now. Was, yeah. They're yeah. gone now. Yeah. That was their version of Destiny 2 when it came out in 2017 and they had to do an about face and they might've, might've had to swallow their pride and say, well, mate, we were wrong, I guess. So I remember they were the ones selling that game when it came out, they were the ones doing the live commentary or the live, uh, uh the, the Vidocs and stuff. They were really, they were the ones selling. I mean, Luke Smith was on the stage with a big two behind it. I remember. And, um, when it came out and was fixed roles, there was really, you, you, everybody gets the same gun. 
there's no progression really. I mean, it just, it just, they, I think they missed the mark on what people that play destiny really want. But, uh, anyway, I'm beating a dead horse now, but, uh, you guys think that's controversial. Wait till you have, wait till you see and hear, I should say here and see, cause you're seeing me live. What I have to say next ooh, it is, ooh, I'm going to, I'm going to end the show with a very, very, I don't know if it's controversial, but, um, we'll get into that right after this. Well, real quick, real oh, quick, yeah. real quick. Yeah. Sorry. Real quick. I have oh, a question about the point. Okay. Go ahead. Rewind. I don't have my soundboard tonight. Sorry. Put me in coach. I'm ready to play. <laughs> um, you know, hammer crasher says, you know, I don't watch streamers. People play a game because it's fun and their friends play with them. Right. That first part is very important. I don't watch streamers. And the thing that we need to remember, we are people who are plugged in, right? We watch news on games. We read leaks, all this stuff. We are a minority of gamers, honestly, at this point, right? We are. It's becoming more and more because it's easier. It's more accessible, right? Yeah. But the majority of people that are playing these games aren't in the know. They see a trailer. They go, oh, that looks interesting. I'm going to jump onto it, right? Yeah. And that's another thing that needs to happen with Marathon is how do you connect with people that aren't completely plugged in with everything going and on? And they jump into a game and they get run over by three sweat lords. Yeah. And then they're gone. That's yeah, it. They're, they're like, like well, they're like that was you, fun. You I'm know? out. 40 bucks there you without the being tubes. plugged in. I had a rough day. I just want to sit down and have fun. Yep. Fuck, that wasn't fun. Yep. I'm out. You know, that's a yep. huge portion of people that needs to be looked at. And right. can they do that? Is another can question. We, can we go back to the wor the world where you had demos that can play the game and then if you wanted to buy it, buy it. You know, yeah. it's called it's demos. called uh, it's called watching YouTube now. That's how you. That's your demo. Yeah, but that's not me experiencing it. Yeah, it's true. yeah, it's true. You're doing it through someone who gets an early copy or does a review yeah. of it before it's released or if they're not, you know, if they're not, you know, 